good morning, good morning. Come on, let's stand to our feet and give the Lord some praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We come into this house to gather his name to worship him. We come today to worship him back to by his holy name. Let us sing with uplifted voice as we come into this house.
thank you for this third day that you've given us in the brand new year. Now, God, we've gathered together to give you glory and to give you honor and to give you praise. We thank you right now, God, that we know that you're right there and you've been standing by us. Oh, God, we thank you right now for you brought us through the old year and you took us into the new. And, God, we know that you're going to do a new thing in this new year. You're going to do a new thing in this new day. So, God, have thine own way. Touch and abide with each that have gathered together and those that will see and are watching right now. Oh God, for every place opened up in your name, for everyone that has pressed their way out from some form or fashion to be able to hear your word today. We thank you, we magnify your holy name. In Jesus Christ, the Lord we pray. And all that love the Lord, say amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. We thank God for each and every one of you for pressing your way out in the household of faith. God is to be given the glory and the honor. In the front of your bulletin, you will find our morning hymn at the cross. We want to sing to the glory of God. Amen. Amen.
We thank God again for each of you. We thank God for the ability to touch those out there watching this morning and those that will watch later on. We're thankful and grateful to God to give us this opportunity to come again. And we know that God did not have to do it. But have I got a witness this morning that you're thankful that the Lord blessed you again and has blessed you to see another year and begin a very new year. Amen? Amen. We come today and we know that as we celebrate the Lord's Supper on this first Sunday in the new year, we have to thank God for everything that he has done. Amen? Amen. So this morning we want to again uh, just give you a few announcements. Uh, first and foremost, all of, all of the envelopes for our members are in, and so we ask that you would somehow make arrangements to come. Uh, Sister Gaylord is usually here every Saturday at some point in time, and so she would be glad to make sure that you can enter in and uh, pick them up. You may come by on Sunday morning if you're not going to stay uh, and pick them up. We pray that you do stay, but come by and get them that you may continue to give into God's house. Uh, we ask that you would mail it in or send it through the pay app that we have uh, provided for you over uh, almost a year since we have not been physically uh, in service again. So we want everyone to start out a new give as God has so blessed you. And uh, God will open that door up and pour out a blessing upon you. Amen? Amen. Again, also, uh, as we see this morning, uh, we've had a little bit of inclement weather. Uh, we've had some uh, snowflakes drop down and some rain. Again, I, I always joke with the people, good Baptists will go through the rain, the snow, and the sleet, and the hail to give God glory. Amen? Amen. And somebody said, well, why do you say that? I said, because Jesus went through hell to get us. And so my brothers and my sisters, we ought to give God every opportunity of praise and worship and entering into his house as often as we can. So what I want to do is, uh, those of you, uh, if you go on your Facebook page when I look out and I can see that the weather is going to be that bad and I don't want to put anybody in danger, we will put a notice up. Now that will not uh, uh, prohibit us from doing service. Uh, we will go online as I did in uh, the middle of March all the way up until June when we started back here. Uh, I will be online. Uh, we may not have the assistance of uh, a musician, but we will do the best we can as we did before. And so again, just look on there and we will let you know exactly what's going to happen. Amen? Amen. We thank God again. Uh, Brother Poole has given us this thank you card, which I want to read. There have been angels in my life. Angels who show up when a kind word is needed when a smile or an act of caring can, can make a big difference. Yes, they, there, are, there have been angels in my life, and one of them is you. Thank you so much, and it's signed by the staff of the Peter Hall Memorial uh, Clinic at the St. Michael's Hospital in Newark. Amen. So we thank God for them, but we thank God that he used us to be able to bless somebody during this season. Again, uh, as I said to you before, we are going to continue in supporting uh, the Union County Urban League uh, Reconnection Program on third and fourth Sundays. We will be collecting, and on our Facebook page, there is a list of items, uh, all personal items that you can get, uh, hats, especially this time of year, scarves, um, whatever you can give to give to those that are coming out of incarceration and going back into the world. Uh, some of them may have uh, family or friends that are helping, but there are a lot more that have nobody that will help them. So let us step up and be as Christ said to us in Matthew 25. Again, we want to, as much as possible, support as we go forward. Again, we want to thank God for each and every one of you. We want to also be mindful of those that are sick and shut in each and every one that is listed on our 
prayer list, Sister Karina Allen, Sister Eula Andrews, Sister Velma Brown, Sister Martha Freeman, uh, Brother Robert Freeman, Sister Sheila Miles, Sister Ann Stewart, Sister Marie Stewart, and Sister Effie White. And yet those that have asked for a special prayer request, Sister Catherine Head, Sister Kim Johnson, and uh, Sister Anita Luck. As well, we thank God. I know that some of you were aware uh, of the love, friend, and brother, uh, Pastor Robert, on Monday was taken to the hospital and admitted, but I can say to you today, uh, he is back home, and we thank God for his blessing and all of the prayer. As well, uh, prior to that, uh, a couple weeks before that, Sister Roberts uh, was in the hospital, but we thank God she's home as well. So God does hear and answer prayers. Prayers of the righteous avail much. So on behalf of the Roberts family, they ask me to thank you, each and every one, for praying uh, for their family and continue to keep them in prayer. Continue to keep those in prayer that today may be uh, traveling back home uh, from their vacations. We pray that the COVID virus has not touched them in any way. Um, again, as we go forward, be patient with God. God's going to take care of us and he's going to see us through. For all of us, when this thing became known to us, we did not know whether we were going to get it. We did not know whether we were going to make it through. But God has given us a sign that he is with us through everything that goes on. And so we want to continue in prayer continue to do the things which have been given to us by the medical experts, uh, wearing the mask, washing your hands, keeping your distance, uh, uh, only staying around those that are in that inner circle that you have continually been around to make sure. Again, we want to stress to each and every one that wearing a mask is not only protecting you, but it's protecting everyone around you. And again, nobody is trying to invade your uh, rights or whatever it is. We're trying to get through this so that we can get rid of that virus Lord, and Lord. then we won't have to wear the mask. It's your choice of whether you take that uh, vaccine or not. But let me tell you something. Again, if something happens to you, everybody's going to look at you and say you have the opportunity. Your, your medical insurance company is going to say the same thing. So be wise in your judgment. Be wise in everything you do. And when you're wise in the things you do, the Lord will bless you and keep you. Amen? Amen. 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 We're grateful and thankful today for those of you that watched uh, watch tonight. Uh, you uh, saw the message, and in that I talked about investing in God. And so that is our theme for this year, investing in God. And so my brothers and my sisters, you need to do everything that you can in your life to invest yourself in God. For everything that God has done, it is still on Facebook. For those that may not have seen it, you can go on there and catch it on there. I will be following suit in those same thoughts as we go through the new year. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet and let's get the word of God. Let us again look towards what God has given us and we're going to in the midst of it um, we're going to uh, look at Genesis the first chapter and we are going to start at the first verse amen, amen. now let me just say to you um, this morning message comes from uh, Genesis 1, starting at verse 1, going to Genesis 2, stopping at verse 3. But we're only going to lift up verse 1. Amen? Amen? I think if you read the rest, you already know the rest about all the things that God did, all the ways that God created the heavens and the earth, all of that, and He did it in six days, and then on the seventh, He rested. Amen? Is that a good scenario right there? Amen. So we're just going to read verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen? Amen? That's our morning scripture lesson, but read verses 1, chapter 1, through verse, uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 3. Amen? Amen? It's praying time this morning. 
And so we thank God for this opportunity. We thank God for the ability that we're able to enter into prayer one more time. We're into, able to enter in to give him thanks. We're able to do some things that we didn't think we might be able to do as we went through last year. But thanks be to God, he's given us the victory through Jesus Christ. He's given us the victory through everything that has gone on. And so my brothers and my sisters, we need to know that God is sweet. He's so sweet that we ought to know it deep in our hearts, that in the midst of it, that as we go forth in prayer this morning, as we give God glory, as we give him honor, he's worthy for everything that we do. Your word just said that while they're in the body, they're absent. 
absent from you. But while they're out in the body, they're in your presence. So God, right now, we thank you for the souls of those that have gone on. Oh God, we realize that you're a God too wise to make a mistake and a God too just to try to hurt us. Oh God, we realize that you won't take us before you're ready for us. And oh God, you won't leave us alone while we go through our trials and our tribulation. So God, right now, we live to the end to give you some thanksgiving. We live to the end to give you some praise. We live to the end to say thank you for what you did last year. Thank you for what you did on the first day, the second day, and what you're about to do on this third day. Right now, God, we just say thank you because we're going to lean and trust and hold in to your name. Oh, God, we're going to believe for what you said, that you would never leave us, no, would you forsake us. Right now, God, we don't know what tomorrow will bring, nor will we know what the rest of this month or year will bring. But, God, we know you're the God of yesterday. We know you're the God of today, and we know you'll be the God of tomorrow. Right now, God, we ask you now with the pour a blessing upon us right now. Oh, God, somebody needs a healing right now. Somebody needs to wake up from a coma right now. Somebody needs to be cured of diabetes. Somebody needs a heart regulated. Somebody needs a mind to be made up. Right now, God, somebody needs to say no to alcohol. Somebody needs to say no to drugs. Somebody needs to say no to prostitution. And we know you can do it, God, in the name of Jesus right now. We're asking as this new year starts, oh God, do a brand new thing in us. Do a brand new thing on this earth. Right now, God, touch doctors that they might go in and help to heal those that are sick. Touch hospitals right now, God, that are overflowing. Right now, God, touch doctors, nurses. Right now, God, use the medicine to cure up. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, we need you right now. To do that new thing in every life. Right now, God, somebody doesn't know who you are. Somebody doesn't know your power. But right now, God, like you cured the, boy, the man that was born blind. Right now, God, like you did with the woman with the issue of blood. Right now, God, like you did for Daniel in the lion's den. Right now, God, for those the free Hebrew boy. Right now, God, for what you did for me. And what you did for everybody else, go into the pit of hell and pull us out right now, God. We thank you and we magnify your holy name. We thank you for every door open in your name, for every man, woman, boy, and girl preaching and teaching and spreading the gospel right now, God. We magnify your holy name, for we know that your name is sweet. And it's sweeter every day that we call on you. It's sweeter every time we wake up and we realize it's a new day. It's sweeter than it's ever been before. So we thank you and we praise your holy name. In the magnificent name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. And all that love the Lord say amen. 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 Come on and put your hands together. Put your mouths together and shout hallelujah. Amen, amen. Come on and give the Lord that praise. Amen. We want again to invite Brother Mike to come and he is going to lead us in a song and then we're coming back with the word for today. Amen. You may have a seat.
And because God is still relevant, we ought to invest ourselves completely and fully in God in every aspect of our life. Not just when we want God. Not just when we need God. But we ought to invest every part of our life in God. I read this article that there are at least five investment firms that are somewhat of 150 years old. And in 2018, they celebrated the 100th, 150th anniversary of the launch of the first investment company. One of the very first investment companies was Foreign and Colonial Investment Trust, which started in 1868. Over 150 years, investment companies have helped investors meet their financial needs and navigate through tough times, including two world wars, the Great Depression, the tech boom and bust, and the global financial crisis, but have uh, remained relevant to those of today's investors. This association <coughs> of investment companies held a round table discussion with the three oldest investment companies with some input from two other investment companies. And what they did was they got together and the managers of the foreign and colonial investment and the Dubin Income, excuse me, Income Growth Investment Company, uh, uh, colonial, foreign and colonial investment is 150 years old. The Dunedin uh, Income Investment Group uh, is 145 years old, and the Scottish American Investment Company is 144 years old. And, and they discussed how their companies had uh, continuously adapted to meet the needs as well as the outlook of the market. The, 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 the director of the association of investments uh, said the investment companies have been helping investors achieve their financial goals for over 150 years. Their pioneering spirit has enabled investors to access growth uh, opportunities in new markets and sectors around the world and has delivered strong and reliable dividends for income seekers. The fact that 23 investment companies have track records growing and, and giving back over 100 years shows how this sector has stood the test of time. It's investing to the invested investment companies are just as innovative today as 17 investment companies launched since 2017 as the sector continues to adopt and meet the, the investors' needs. The question asked to them, to these companies, was simply this. How investment companies remain relevant in today's time? Paul Neven, who was the, found, uh, the fund manager of the Foreign and Colonial Investment Trust, said the trust was established 150 years ago with the purpose of bringing the advantages of a pooled approach to investing to the investors of moderate means. And its objective is as true today as it was on the first day as it was founded. The key to trust uh, success, having paid a dividend to shareholders in every year of its history, and having increased dividends for 47 consecutive years, is that it has never stood still. It has continued to successfully evolve to ensure it, it's remained relevant for investors of the day. James Dapp, a co-manager of Scottish American Investment Company, like uh, his other counterpart, uh, says that remaining relevant for 150 years by remaining true to sound investment principles. In the Scottish American case, 
Our long-standing focus has been to invest in growing companies with robust, robust cash flow, which are overseen by boards with a strong commitment to paying dividends. This, this tried and test approved has underpinned the trust a long record of inflation beating income growth for its shareholders. We expect this to continue along in the future. Ben Ritchie, lead manager of the Dunedain uh, in Income Growth Investment Trust, said state started life under Robert Fleming in 1870, investing in North American railroads, uh, investing in the bonds that would build these railroads. Today, close to 150 years later, its investment predominantly in the UK equities, our ambition remains to provide a compelling combination of capital, income growth to our investors using the natural advantages of investment trust structure. It is increasingly well positioned to meet the challenges of providing a relatively high and growing dividend in a world where yield is sacrificed. My brothers and my sisters, you're probably asking the question, why, pastor, why, preacher, why, reverend, why are you talking about these companies? Well, that's where the text comes in. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. My brothers and my sisters, these companies that are somewhat of 150 years old, they are saying that they were the first investment company that ever came about. But I want to tell you that God was the first investment company that ever came about. For the Bible says that in the beginning, and if I'm correct, there was nothing there that God called out and nothing answered. And the word says that he took nothing and created it into something. That, that, that when you read from that first verse in the first chapter and you go through all of the following verses and you go through down to the second chapter and the third verse, you will find that God is the first and foremost investment company that anybody could put all of their investment in. I, I need to tell you today that, that, that when, in fact, we look at what is going on in the world, that they have said that through all of the wars and through all of the depression and through all of that, they were able to still give back. But I, I want to tell you that it had nothing to do with them. It had to do with what God had already done. Now, I need to tell you that in all life, we know that there is a God, and it is in the fractional uh, uh, statement, along with these verses in chapter 1 and beginning all the way to chapter 2, verse 3, that we read and see what God created. God created. The summary statement will be detailed in the following verses, but the Bible simply and straightforwardly declares the world did not create itself or come about by chance. It was created by God, who by definition is eternal and always has been. My brothers and my sisters, I want to tell you today that while you're trying to invest in everything else, your best investment will be in God. Your best investment will be in Jesus who died for you on Calvary. Yeah. I want to tell you right now that while you're looking at all of these other things, trying to figure out how you're going to get from one day to the next, from month to month, and from year to year, I would put all of my investments in God. For the Bible says in the beginning, God was right there and God created all things. Yeah. If you look through all of the verses, you'll find that God created these things, and when God created it, there was nothing else but God created it. When you look through what God did, God made it, and when God looked at it, God said it was good. Yeah. All yeah. my brothers and my sisters, if you go to an investment firm, they will look at a lot of different things. They will tell you, no, don't invest in that. Don't do this and don't do that. But if you put all your of the first sentence of the Bible. For this word,
word dominates the whole chapter and catches the eye at every point of every page. It is used some 35 times as many verses in the Bible. If you believe Genesis 1 and 1, you really have no problem believing the rest of the Bible. You shouldn't have any problem believing if I invest in God, I'm not going to lose anything. But I'm going to gain eternal life. I'm going to gain a mansion somewhere where every day is Sunday and Sabbath has no end. I'm going to gain if I invest in God to be able to walk down the streets of gold. I will be able if I invest in God to be somewhere around this throne. If I invest in God, I will realize that there's no more heartache, there's no more pain, there's no more suffering, there's no more heart uh, disease, there's no more diabetes, there's no more problem, there's no more COVID, but every day will be Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. Listen, it's all if right. we invest it's all right. in God, it's all right, the, the, the God big enough to create the heavens and the earth, is big enough to do all the rest the Bible said that he did and he does. Oh, if you invest in him, anybody that create that could create the sun and sit it where it is, create the stars, the moon, and make them stay where they are, make the stars twinkle at night, make the moon glow at night, make the sun bright in the day. Ah, oh, if he could put green in the grass, put in the mist on it, the fly in the bird, put the wiggle in the fish, make water wet. How many in here, how many out there know you better invest in God? Amen, amen. It's all right, Bishop. It's all right. The Bible it's all right. says this. God created not only did he create the heavens, that the simple fact of God's creation is even more amazing when we consider the greatness of God's universe. A, a typical galaxy contains billions of individual stars. Our galaxy alone, the Milky Way, contains 200 billion stars. The average distance between one galaxy and another is 20 million trillion miles. Our closest galaxy is the Andromeda galaxy, about 12 million trillion miles away. You tell me that a God that could create galaxies like that can't do all things exceedingly and abundantly. Well, don't you want to invest in a God that's able to do all things like that? Don't you want to create? Don't you want to invest in a God that even where he sits, he can speak and dispatch angels and angels will come down and see about you. Have I got a witness today? Won't you invest in God? Every hatch of sky the size of the moon, if you could look very deep, you would see about a million galaxies. But God did all of this himself. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth. My right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. You'll find that passage in Isaiah 48. But God is bigger and greater than all of his creations. Who has measured the water in the hollow of his hand? Measured heaven with a span. Calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. Isaiah 40. All who could in the midst of it take nothing and turn it into something. Wow. Who could take the dust of the earth, formulate it into what would be man? But the fact is that God is such a creator that God invested in man. God invested by blowing his breath in the man, and man became a living soul. I would take the opportunity to invest in God. He that gives me breath every day. He that picks me up. He that put food on my table. He that takes care of me. He that's there when doctors walk away. He that will wipe tears from my eyes. He that's there when mother and father will save me. He that will be closer than a friend. I want to tell you today that God you ought to invest in God. Amen, amen. It's all right, preacher. It's all right. It's all right. God created the heavens and the earth. If God created the heavens and the earth, 
then we must forever put away the idea that anything happens by chance. Chance merely describes the statistical probability of something happening. Chance itself can neither do nor perform. Oh, let me tell you, it's not by chance that you woke up this morning, yeah. but it's by the hand of God yeah. that you woke you up. Oh, no, it's not by right. chance that you were looked after through all of last year. Yeah. No, it was by God that you put food on your yeah. table. Yeah. It was by God that healed your body. It was by yeah. God yeah. that watched over your bed. It was by God that when her calm and danger was around you, it was by God. Oh, I want you to know this day that you are in Universe, not by chance, but by power. 
Our universe is just right universe. It's just right because God made it. According to you, Ross, in his, in his book, The Fingerprint of God, the universe has a just right gravitational force. If it were larger, the stars would be too hot and would burn up too quickly and too unevenly to support life. If it was smaller, the stars would remain so cool and so cold, nuclear fission would neither ignite and there would be no heat and no light. The universe has a just right speed of light. If, if it were larger, stars would send out too much light. If it were smaller, stars would not send out enough light. The universe has a just right average distance between the stars. If it were, if it were larger, the heavy element density, density would be too thin for rocky planets to form, and there would only be a gaseous planet. If it were too small, the planetary orbit, orbit would become destabilized because of the gravitational pull from other stars. The universe has a just right polarity of water molecules. If it were greater, the heat of fusion and the vaporization would be too great for life to exist. If it were too small, the heat of the fusion and the vaporization would be too small for life to exist. Liquid water would become too inferior a solvent for life's chemistry to precede ice and not float, leading to a run off of freezing up ice. We could conclude that there is no chance that as such a universe could create itself apart from having an intelligent design. Well, I need to tell you today that in the beginning, God created. And what God created, he created for us. He created it that we would understand that he's God all by himself. Amen. He created it so that the water would flow the right way. He created it that the sun would give off its proper due. Oh, he created it that the moon would do what it's supposed to do. I stop by to tell you today, he created us in verse 27 of chapter 1 in his own image. He created us that we would reinvest in him. He created us in the second chapter, verse 7, when he blew his light in us, that we would invest in him. I stop by to tell you today uh, that the God of yesterday uh, is the God of today uh, shall be the God of tomorrow. Uh, and if you invest in the God of yesterday uh, that made all things, uh, if you invest in the God of today uh, that woke you up this morning, uh, started you on your way, uh, the God of today uh, that guided you here to this place, uh, the God Put on your table uh, if you hold on to that God, uh, the same God uh, that helped you through last year, uh, the same God uh, that healed your body. Uh, if you hold on to Him, uh, if you invest in Him, uh, God is relevant uh, to your life right now. Uh, we don't know uh, what 2021 uh, is going to do, uh, but how many today? Invest in him. How many today know he's a relevant God? For he's handled all of your needs. He supplied them like he told you would. I want to tell you today the same God yesterday, the same God today will be the God of tomorrow. He'll be the God that he promised he would be. Now I got a witness today. God, will you hold on to God's unchanging hand? If you hold on, God will see you through. That's all I got for you today. God is relevant, for He shed His own Son's life. He shed His blood on Calvary. That sin of plunge beneath His flood would lose all His guilt and stain. He invested. Won't you invest in him? He said that he went down in the pit of hell. Got your life and got my life. Walked out of the pit of hell with all power in his hand. Invest in God. He 
been there through all things. All things. He's been there through every war. He's been there through the beginning of time. So today, God is relevant in our lives. If you just trust and believe in God, God will take care of you through every day, through everything, and through each and every way. Songwriter said, Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. And all but a foretaste of glory divine. He is that in the midst of it, that God has purchased our life through Jesus Christ. And God has invested in the beginning and he invested in Christ Jesus to invest in us. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased by God, born of His Spirit, and washed in His blood. This is my soul.
Those that are here, come forward. Those out there, confess it with your mouth and believe in your heart. And once you've done that, go find yourself a place opened up and unite yourself with those that are teaching the word of God. For my brothers and my sisters, the God of yesterday is relevant. The God of today is relevant and the God of tomorrow is relevant. For he's the God that created all things, the God who has sustained us. And as I come today, we come to break the bread of life. We come to drink the blood that has been shed for us. That we come today knowing that God is God all by himself. He's a relevant God. He's a true God. And if you have no problem believing in God, then you have no problem believing in the rest. So as we come today and we prepare, let us mentally and physically prepare ourselves. That if in fact we believe in God, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That today we will be able to accept this broken body and this spilled blood. You may be seated. Amen. Our song this morning for our communion is Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior 162 in your hymn books. Please let us sing to the glory of God. Took the cup, and 
After he had blessed it, he gave it to each of them. He said, drink this. This is my blood which is shed for you. It is good for the remission of sin. We will not drink again until we shall meet in that new Jerusalem. He gave it to each of them and they did drink. Let us do likewise. Our God and our Father, we thank you, we glorify you, we lift you up. We thank you for the opportunity to partake of this communion. We thank you for the opportunity to step into your house. We thank you for the opportunity of the breath in our bodies to give you praise and to worship. God, as we go out of this place, continue to fill us with that Holy Spirit that we might give it out, spread it all over, that again we'll return empty so we can be filled up again. We thank you in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Well, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Well, one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Well, they hung him all night long. They hung him all night long. They hung him all night long. Of worship 
We thank you for allowing us to enter into this place. We thank you that we found you here when we got here because we brought you with us all the way. God, we thank you right now for all that you did then and all that you're doing now and all that you will do. God, we thank you for that new thing that you're already doing and the new things that you'll continue to do in all our lives. Now, God, we ask that thou would continue to watch over this branch of Zion. Watch all that belong to this place and every branch opened up in your name. Oh, God, we know that you're a God that just don't watch over us, but you watch over even those yet that have yielded to your name. Oh, God, right now, just touch. We know you can and we know you will. Open their eyes that they might see you and know you and that they're willing to give their life unto you. Now unto him who can hold his faultless before the everlasting throne. May his love rest rule and abide his forth and forevermore. And all the love of the Lord say, Amen. Amen. Amen.